Algebra 1, number 3.2a, we're talking about the multiplication property of equality in this unit. And we're going to use the multiplication property of equality to solve some problems in this video. If you remember from the last video, we said the addition property of equality says for all rational numbers a, b, and c, if a and b are identical and they equal each other, then we can add a to c and it's going to be the same as adding b to c. And the multiplication property of equality tells us for all rational numbers a, b, and c, if a and b are the same, if they're identical, then we can multiply a to c, and it's going to be the same thing as multiplying b to c, because a and b are the same, all right? So when we solved an equation by using the addition property of equality, we used additive inverses to get rid of a number from one side of the equal sign to isolate the variable and find its value. We created zero pairs, didn't we? Well, when we use the multiplication property of equality in a similar way by multiplying both sides of the equal sign by the same number to isolate the variable. But instead of creating a zero pair, we create a one. We use the multiplicative inverse of the number, its reciprocal. And the reciprocal of five would be one fifth because we could say five is five over one, couldn't we? And when we switch the numerator and denominators, the reciprocal becomes one-fifth. It's flipped around, see? Now, remember to check this video's description for links to similar and helpful videos. I'll have stuff about the reciprocal and all of that stuff, the additive inverse, and everything will be in the description, okay? So to solve 5a equals 35, we need to get that a alone away from the 5 on the left side of the equal sign. And the multiplicative inverse of 5, its reciprocal, is one-fifth. We just flip it around. If we multiply both sides of the equation by one-fifth, we'll isolate the variable and we'll create a one. In fact, it'll be our friend the invisible one. One-fifth can be multiplied. We can just put a one underneath this five and underneath that 35 so we can multiply the fraction straight across. And we get five over five, see? So on the left side, we have five over five a. And on the right side, we have 35 over five. And we can simplify. 35 over 5 is a 7, right? And this 5 over 5 is our friend, the invisible 1, isn't it? But we know we don't need to write him because we can see there's 1a there, okay? So that's the multiplicative identity, our friend, the invisible 1. Now, all we have to do is plug the 7 in as an a and check to see if we did it right. 5 times 7 is 35. Yep, we did it right. All right, let's look at this one. This one's a little trickier, so you might want to copy this into your notes and write it down because it, the method to do it is tricky, but it's really a really simple problem. We have negative x equals 12. Actually, all we need to do is just take this negative sign and flip it and put it on that sign and, side and we're done. But if you need to show your work, we use the multiplication property to multiply both sides by a negative 1. We use the property of negative 1. So we multiply this side by negative 1, negative 1 times negative x, becomes a negative times a negative, right? That gives us a positive x. We have two negatives. And we multiply this side by negative 1, and we get negative 12. Now we have x equals negative 12. Just like I said, we could just flip and put that negative sign on that side if we wanted to and just do it quickly. So let's check it. Let's plug in negative 12 where the x was. We had a negative x equals 12. And now where that x is, we're going to put a negative 12 in. So now we have a negative of a negative 12. Well, that's a positive 12, isn't it? So it's kind of crazy the way you have to show your work when actually all you have to do is just move that negative sign over to the other one. Sort of like the last problem we had where um, I showed you that the negative x could equal 11 or x could equal negative 11, OK? All right, let's take a look at this one. We've got some fractions. We've got 3 eighths equals negative 5 fourths x. We need to get rid of this negative 5 fourths so the x is by itself. So we use the multiplication property to multiply both sides by the reciprocal. And flipping it over, numerator and denominator, we get a negative 4 fifths. That negative sign stays. When you do a reciprocal of a negative, it keeps the negative. We don't get rid of it, OK? It's got no the reciprocal has nothing to do with it being positive or negative, so we keep the negative. So now we're multiplying both sides of this equation by negative 4 fifths. And 4 times 3 is 12, and 5 times 8 is 40, and we bring our negative side down because that's a negative and that's a positive. It made a negative. Now we're going to multiply a negative to a negative. So negative 4 times negative 5 is a positive 20. See? 
and we got a positive 20. So now we got 20 over 20, and that's our buddy the invisible 1, isn't it? Same numerator and denominator. We simplify this, 4 can go into both 12 and 40 as a 3 tenths, and now we have negative 3 tenths equals x. All we have to do to check it is to plug a negative 3 tenths in where the x was. So we multiply negative 5 fourths times a negative 3 tenths, we get 15 over 40, and that equals 3 eighths when we simplify it. We did it correctly. All right, we got one last one down here. We've got x over 3 equals 6. Now, we've learned before that we can just multiply the 6 times the 3 and get 18, and then put that up there, right? But let's do it the right way by showing our work. We'll multiply both sides by the reciprocal of the reciprocal of this one. Now, how do you do a reciprocal when there's a variable there? Well, remember, our friend, the invisible one, is here, isn't he? And he can help us. So what we do is we multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1x over 3 as just 3 over 1. We drop that x off, okay? And we just put the 1 there. That's the tricky part, okay? Just remember to drop the x off and flip it over as 3 over 1. Now when we multiply, we get 3x over 3 equals 18 over 1. And when we simplify it, this 3 over 3 becomes our friend, the invisible 1, doesn't it? We end up with just an x equals 18. We can check it by plugging 18 where the x was. 18 over 3 does equal 6, so we know we did it correctly, okay? I know this can be really confusing. So if you need to go back and check the description and watch some other videos, that's fine, okay? It's a couple minutes out of your life that'll help. But remember when you do the reciprocals, they keep their negative or positive sign, and when you have a numerator or a denominator that's a variable and you need a reciprocal, just put a 1 there and drop that variable off, okay? That'll help. Now, we're going to actually solve some word problems in 3.2b, and we're going to use this multiplication property of equality to do that, okay? I'll see you there. Bye.